from Hollywood, Jackie Cooper in The Unexpected. The Unexpected. The Unexpected. Life is filled with the unexpected, romantic, tragic, and mysterious endings to our most ordinary actions. Dreams come true, or dreams are shattered by sudden twists of fate in The Unexpected. But first, a word from your announcer. Jackie Cooper, famous motion picture and stage star in Museum, a drama of the unexpected. That's what it was, a museum, old and decayed. Row after row of paintings, long, narrow hallways of statues and tapestries, and rooms filled with worn-out, worm-eaten furniture. It wasn't a place to live in was just a collection of antiques. And the people there had grown cold and impersonal and heartless, like everything else in the house. They were antiques, too. That's why I hated the place. Hated every moment I had to stay there. And hated myself for staying. Stephen? Come here, Stephen. Yes, Miss Thompson. I want you to polish the armor in the upstairs hallway. It's become very dull, and I noticed a speck of rust this morning. I'll take care of it. I don't see why I have to remind you of these matters. Why can't you show a little initiative? I'm sorry. When you finish with the armor, then clean the china in the showcase under the stairway. It hasn't been washed in months. Yes, ma'am. Stephen, just a minute. Yes? Aren't you happy here in my home? If you aren't, you can get out. It doesn't make any difference that I've looked after you since you were a child. Treated you as if you were my own son. You needn't feel any obligation toward me. You can leave this place any time you choose. Where would I go? I really have no idea. Now go upstairs and get me a book or a magazine. I want something to read. Well, do as I tell you, Stephen. I don't like to be kept waiting. Yes, Miss Thompson. I'll be right back. Oh, oh look out, you blundering fool. I, what's the matter? Oh, you stupid boy. Can't you watch where you're going? You nearly knocked over that Ming vase. Don't you know it's priceless? Why, if anything happened to that, I'd... Well, I, I don't know what I'd do. I'm sorry. Someday you'll be sorry too late, Stephen. Just remember that. And that's the way it was, day after day. I suppose Miss Thompson was nice to me in her way, but she kept me in that awful house until I thought I couldn't stand it for another hour. A hundred times I started to run away. There was no place to go. She knew that. And I'd given up hoping that I'd ever leave Glenwood until that morning when Mr. Clinton, her personal secretary, walked up behind me and twittered in my ear. Stephen, how would you like to leave this house? What do you mean, Mr. Clinton? Well, I've been thinking about you. There isn't much of a life here at Glenwood for a young man. You ought to be with people your own age, having a little fun, and maybe going to school somewhere. Mm, great chance I've got. Now, don't be bitter, Stephen. Miss Thompson agrees with me. 
Uh, her doctor has advised a change of climate, so she's going to close up the place and move north for the fall. You mean it, Mr. Clinton? Of course I mean it. So, if things work out in a few weeks, you'll be in college. College? That's wonderful. I, well, gee, I, I just can't believe it. It's too good to be true. Gee, thanks for telling me, Mr. Clinton. Thanks a lot. I... <coughs> oh. The vase. Oh, that I, was very careless of you. have been very careless. But I don't know what Miss Thompson will say. It was one of her favorite pieces. Well, you, you're not going to tell her, are you, Mr. Clinton? She'd never forgive me. She, she'd never let me go to college if she found out. You won't tell her, will you? My dear boy, I have a responsibility to Miss Thompson. Well, I'm the one who broke it. It's up to me to say something, if, if there's anything to be said. Don't you know, Stephen, that the man who conceals knowledge of a crime is just as guilty as the man who commits the crime? Oh, it wasn't any crime. It was just an accident. Well, we'll let Miss Thompson decide about that. Don't argue with me, Stephen. Mr. Clinton has told me exactly what happened. I didn't mean to knock it over, Miss Thompson. I was just excited about going to college. Well, you can curb your pleasure now. You mean you aren't going away? Oh, yes. Yes, I am. You're... you're not taking me with you? I should hardly think so, Stephen. You're not going anywhere until you learn to conduct yourself like a gentleman. But no... That's not fair. Not a bit fair. It was just an old flower pot. You're quite right. It was a very old flower pot. And it was worth a great deal more than money. But I don't expect you to understand that, Stephen. Not yet. Oh, I understand all right. I understand that all this junk around here means more to you than people for their feelings and desires, even their lives. That will do, Stephen. You just don't want to hear the truth, but it is the truth and you know it. The only thing in the world that matters to you is this house and the vases and paintings and furniture. Stephen. This isn't a house. It's a museum. And you aren't a person, Miss Thompson. No, not really. You're just a statue without feelings like everything else in this place. Thank you, Stephen. Now I know how you feel about me and about my things. Yes, you know. When your parents died, Stephen, I thought I could rear you. Instill a love of beauty and fine art and craftsmanship. It's obvious I haven't succeeded. But I won't give up quite so easily. I think there's still hope for you, Stephen. And so, while Mr. Clinton and I are up north, I'm going to permit you to remain at Glenwood. I'm going to stay here. You don't have to. You're always free to leave, Stephen. Yeah. Of course, if you should decide to remain, perhaps then you'll learn a true appreciation of fine art. One must live with art in order to understand it. I'll stay, Miss Thompson. Oh, yes, I'll stay. I thought you would. Well, I'll, I'll tell the caretaker he won't be needed. You'll uh, be able to look after everything, won't you, Stephen? Yes, I'll look after everything. So I stayed on in Glenwood. All through the end of that long, hot summer. Alone. With only the smell of old furniture and painted canvas for company. As the days went by, I realized I could never break free from Glenwood. I was really trapped now. Caught forever. In a maze of dust and old brocade and stained glass. There wasn't any way out. I was sure of that. Until one afternoon, when I saw a chance to get out. I was working in the garden when I first noticed it. A faint, pungent odor. Smoke. Yeah, something was burning. Inside the house, a fire had broken out. I ran through the front door into the main drawing room and stopped suddenly as I saw what had happened. A little pile of oil rags I'd been using to clean some of the portraits had caught on fire. I don't know how it started exactly. Maybe the sun had been magnified by the curved glass in one of the showcases until it burned through the inflammable cloth. Anyway, by the time I got there, little tongues of flames were licking up an old French tapestry, eating it hungrily in small, dainty bites. I stood there for a moment, watching the tapestry disappear. Then I woke up. There was still time to save the house, so I hurried into the kitchen for a bucket of water and raced back to the living room. 
Oh, it was still just a harmless little blaze. One pailful would have put it out. I raised the bucket and held it back, ready to throw the water against the wall. Then I hesitated. Why should I save the house? All these antiques and priceless paintings. What did they mean to me? Nothing but misery and unhappiness. Let them burn. I didn't care. Let them burn. I set the bucket on the floor and watched the fire, fascinated as it grew like a boa constrictor, getting bigger as it devoured more and more of the wall. As I started to back out of the room, I had a sharp pang of conscience. Miss Thompson didn't carry insurance. She always said there wasn't enough money in the world to cover the value of the priceless objects the house contained. She'd lose everything she owned in the fire. Well, that wasn't my worry. I didn't owe her anything. I never had. One of the ceiling beams came crashing down beside me, and I knew I had to get out of there and get out fast. So I ran down the hall, a heat following on my heels. Out the open door and across the garden. Now I felt cool, calm, and unexcited. Behind me, the dying house chuckled and laughed as a fire embraced it in unrelenting arms. And with a final scream, the roof crashed and settled to its doom. The museum was gone. Burned up. I was free. Free at last. I'd never have to look at that house again. I had escaped it forever. You think the story is over, don't you? But wait. Fate takes a hand. Wait for the unexpected. Now for the surprising conclusion of Museum, a Hamilton Whitney production starring Jackie Cooper, written by Robert Libet and Frank Burt, and directed by Frank K. Danzig. It was the next day before I could get a call through to Mr. Clinton. And when I finally did talk to him, he didn't give me a chance to mention the fire. He had something much more important on his mind. I am so glad you called me, Stephen. I've been trying to reach you for several hours. Miss Thompson... Uh, what about Miss Thompson? You must be brave, Stephen. Miss Thompson passed on last night. Very sudden, a heart attack. You... You mean she's dead? Yes. That's why I've been trying to call you. And uh, I don't suppose I should mention this yet. But you're a very wealthy man, Stephen. But... Uh, you but see, I, I, I know about the will. Miss Thompson left you the house and everything in it. Yes, Stephen, you certainly are fortunate. I wish I had your luck. Museum star Jackie Cooper. Listen again soon for another of your favorite motion picture stars in a drama of The Unexpected. This program was transcribed in Hollywood.